What's up guys and gals and welcome back to another fun-filled episode of RimWorld. In the previous episode we had staved off another- the attacks are getting bigger and bigger I guess. They are inflating, they are becoming quite large over time. I feel as though the raiders are becoming a little bit more excited by the fact that they can get a consistent source of death and violence from over here. We're acting as a vetting system. I bet they're just sending all of their noobs at us. And anybody that survives and runs back to base, they're just like, Alright, you're the new guy. Hooray, promoted! You're now a corporal. <laughs> It's like XCOM, you just have to survive a whole bunch of just terrible situations in which everyone dies. Basically, you get promoted by being the last man left. We need to rebuild one of our security turrets up here. And so, we'll put that... Yeah, it seems okay. And I think that's still inside the explosive radius, so we'll put that right there. And like I said, we need to sort this room out. This room is still not quite so... It's not arranged in the fashion in which I would like it at the moment, it just seems like it's a random assortment of turrets just all over the place, and in fact I would like it to be systemic. I would like it to have some semblance of order. And so what I may do is, even though we just built all this, I may knock this wall out and move this back a little bit further, slide that back by like one, maybe two, and then we'll be able to have a couple more turrets down in here that'll be in firing range if they try and walk into the room. I also don't think it would be so terrible of an idea to have one in the corner, and maybe have one right here as well. But beyond that, I think we're in an okay situation. That last fight went pretty well. We only lost one turret, so there's not a whole lot to worry about. It's when you lose like four to five, maybe, turrets in one go that you should probably start pondering maybe setting up a better security system. We have Artyom Ransky. I wonder if that's named after Artyom from Metro 2033. Speaking of which, I just got around to playing Metro Last Light, and it's amazing how much they improved. Metro 2033 was one of those games that I liked, but I had kind of a love-hate relationship with. I enjoyed it a lot, but you would just get stuck in walls, and there were a lot of bugs and just random things wrong with the game. It's amazing how much better Last Light is than the first game. It's like they took the combat and they were just like, alright, well everybody just complained about the combat in the last game, so let's make it so that the combat is what we focus on here. And so I feel like they went through, I mean the stealth is still pretty bad. As far as the stealth system goes, the enemies are still telepathic, like they know. Let's say you knife a guy in the back corner of the room, but you do it a little bit too slowly. Somehow the second he sees you, the guy completely and totally on the other end of the compound knows that you're there as well. Like the linked AI, I suppose, where if one person becomes aware of you before they ring an alarm or anything, everybody becomes aware of you. They didn't fix that. But they made the combat a lot better, and that's all you can really ask for. So, hey, I enjoyed Metro Last Light, and I give it an endorsement now. It wasn't... I went into it kind of wondering if it was going to be good or not, and I was pleasantly surprised. It was a decent game, but back on the subject, that's weird how one person named Artyom can come... Is that a common name in Russia? I know I have a couple Russian fans. Is that... Are a lot of people named Artyom over there? Because if a lot of people are named Artyom, I'm just going to assume that, you know, they just went with a common name, but maybe Tynan Sylvester is really, really into Metro. Which is cool. I like Metro. I haven't read the books yet. I've always wanted to get around to reading the books for Metro 23 by Dimitri, or I forget his name. It's up on the splash screen before you start playing in both games. Solonovsky or something like that. I don't know. They always seem like a good see. Oh, good. More raiders. That was quick. That was really quick. We got new raiders fast. Wow. We haven't even had time to clean up the bodies on the last ones yet. Okay, so they must be getting more desperate or something. We have pretty much a bunch of guys with sniper rifles and whatnot. This group seems to have zoned in with... Oh, these guys are going to get butchered. Oh, he's got frag grenades though, so maybe not. We did find metal down here during our mining. Let's go ahead and I'm going to cancel all of the mining jobs just to make sure that nobody's draining their sanity out right before we get into a big old shootout again. And let's go ahead and reactivate all of you guys. So now that all the turrets are back up and running and shifting around restlessly. A couple more people farming. And we're just going to wait for this assault to come through. We've killed a guy named Wedge in like the last four groups. There was always a guy named Wedge. Every single group. I'm sure I've missed other ones too. Every single group had a guy named Wedge though. I know we've seen Maya a couple of times, although that does take me back to the old days of State of Decay. I love that game. I don't know why that game didn't get more attention. That was a really, really great game. I need to go back and play it again, too. Oh, Freedy joined our side. So where is Freedy at? We need to give Freedy a sleeping spot, BTW. By the way, let's see here. I need to stop using that. That is just something that I'm way too old to be saying. Let's go to sleeping spot. We'll put it right there so that she's got a place to crash out. And then what we need from Freedy is we need her to grab a gun. So we'll get an M16 real fast before this battle starts. 
Actually, there's one right there. Never mind. There's a closer one. Oh yeah. And so now that we're strapped in and ready for battle, let's get everybody but Will ready to roll. Ready to roll like a Cinnabon. And so there they are right there. They have now made visual contact. And we shall now begin moving everyone into their covered positions. And I suppose everybody else can take up defensive positions along these points down here. As we all file into our lovely battle positions. Mm, I think he's going to have his best firing range from right here. Or maybe like right here. Ooh, bad day to be the guy with the afro. Terrible day to be that guy. Mistakes were made. What did we learn? Never be the first guy into this area. Although I think they are just using overwhelming superior numbers at this point. Ooh. Okay, so grenade guy got a lot done during that fight. This guy right here who just sat in the back throwing grenades the whole time? I think we just... No, we didn't lose anybody. But he killed his own faction. Ow. Damn. Okay, so... Let's get everybody off guard duty, and we're going to try and... Wow, that one went really badly. That guy with the grenades hurt us bad. Why do I hear the fountain? I hear the sounds of someone fighting. But I don't see it. Oh, it's the boom rat. Okay, so... Oh, Fox is down. Damn. Okay, so somebody go... Or wait, is that one of theirs? Oh, it's one of theirs. Okay, so go grab him. And someone else come out here and fight this boom rat. <laughs> I was hoping for a second that Inessa would beat him to death with the crippled body of whoever she was carrying. Kind of a humorous situation. Beat him to death with Fox. And I don't think he's capable of violence, even with these boom rats. So I think he just runs away. Ah, damn it. That boom rat is persistent. I'll give him that. Damn. He's very persistent. Why is the game... I, I don't like that it defaults to slow-mo every time something attacks. I'm like, no, I don't want slow-mo. Just do this speedy style. And please don't shoot my own people. Yeah, like that. That's exactly what I was talking about. Please don't do that. I don't think we lost anybody. I think we should still be okay. But we did have the misfortune there of really having two attacks in short order that were right next to each other. And so RNG may get us. I don't know. Got a farming vessel coming in. Let's go ahead and get somebody over here to open communications. Oh, there's an industrial trader too. So let's get all of the metal that they can supply. And the moment that we've got all of their metal, we shall rebuild everything to be more awesome. There it is. And so Freedy's going to go back now. And with the farming vessel, how are we doing on food? We're looking okay with food. I think we're all right there, but we are going to take all of your me metal too. At which point, let's go ahead and get all of our power grid back up and running. We're going to put in more metal walls. Kind of an unfortunate downside to everything that's happened. I'm also going to put in another stockpile down here. And there it is right there. And this will just be a zone where we're not going to take corpses, but we're going to take debris over there when we've got a minute. Please don't trap yourselves in the walls. I'm begging you, please don't. Okay, fantastic. Every now and again they do it, and I've got to dig them out of the walls by getting rid of my own metal. And it makes me a little bit perturbed, I guess. It makes me feel exasperated. 
filled with the spirit of Exasper. I think what I'll do now is replace those metal walls right this second. Got Fox in there. I need to get these rooms done too. So let's go ahead and get started with these. Freedy's pretty beat up. That's because these guys right here, they got caught up in the explosion of all the turrets and everything. In one respect, it sort of helps me whenever the enemy wipes this stuff out because it does allow me to reorganize things while at the same time not wasting my resources. So, and I know you guys are probably saying, ah, oh, you've already wasted them. They were wasted a long, long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. And such is the existence of the Splatter Cat. Just a life of wasted time and everything else. I think I should probably put a turret right there so that it blows up right by the front door and kills them if they mess around too much. And I think this time... There we go. So that seems to be arranged a little bit better. I don't know if we're going to have enough metal to actually do all of that. Is she healing? Okay, so sometimes what'll happen is they'll go to bed, but they won't get healed. And that means you have to have somebody assigned to doctoring. And if you don't have somebody assigned to doctoring, well, good luck to you. I should probably also take a second and just sell whatever I can to this combat supplier. I know we've got a bunch of stuff. Oh, he already left. Never mind. Oh, well. That's what happens when the hauling doesn't get done. Set a bunch of people down there doing that. Let's go ahead and start moving these bodies around. Cross is spending his days hauling pickle, which sounds like a euphemism for jigalowin. But it's alright, or jigahyan, or whatever you want it to be. I should probably get rid of some of these bodies. That would be another thing that I should probably concern myself with. We'll do it in a little bit. We'll get it done. It'll get done eventually. There we are. So now that that's done, let's get started with these turrets because we don't know if we're going to be taking an attack anytime soon. Luckily, they do really seem to... Oh, we don't have 600 metal. We have way more than 600. I thought I had like 1,700. They just haven't hauled it yet. So it doesn't add the total to your amount until they put it in a stockpile somewhere. And nobody has stockpiled anything thus far. So that would explain our underlying problem. So as soon as that gets done, I think we're about good on food. I should probably put in lamps again. Just to make sure that our battle center is illuminated. Those are all not connected to any power circuit, so we need to fix that as well. And I believe the way in which I shall fix that will be thusly. Okay, so we've got all kinds of redundant power lines running around. All those things that we're going to be needing for the future. I usually try to spurn redundancy, but when it comes to power systems in your battle room, you probably don't want to. It's probably in your best interest to make sure that you don't spurn that initiative. And once we've got the power grid back up and running, everybody will no longer be in the dark. With Fox, I need him to be recruited. And then as soon as they get done constructing all of the new turrets, we should be back on deck and able to start back with the mining, getting people their own personal rooms that they can hang out in, etc., etc., etc. Our resident empath is trying to talk people back into joining. I am taking a look through weapons right now to make sure that everybody is using an optimal weapon, whether it be an M16 or better. He's still using a pump shoddy. So unfortunately, Squirrel, I'm going to need you to come over here and grab an M16. I know you don't like I hate it when people interrupt my work, for example. I always I worked in a repair station for a little bit, just kind of fixing electronics. And I loved just being in my cubicle, fixing stuff all by my lonesome. And there would always be somebody that come in and mess with my workflow. Just be like, hey, did you see that thing? And then we've got that little piece of paperwork. And you'd be like, eh. I'm trying to work right now, pal. If you could just give me, like, 12 seconds. Just give me a minute. We can talk on lunch break. But right now, I got the work to do so that I can go home early. That was the other thing, is I kind of dictated my own hours. And so, when you dictate your own hours, part of the fun of that is you can get to work a little bit early so that you can get off a little bit earlier. And so, when you get those little tiny concerns, like people wanting to chat, like, gossip around the office, kind of those water cooler chats, you're like, yeah. I'm trying to get stuff done. I got here early for a reason. No! You can see your own free time just vanishing out from under you. Let's 
go ahead and get that carpeted. And I shall eliminate that bed now because we have the extra room. Continue to run conduit down this way. A cargo unit has re-entered, and is it close enough for us to grab? No. They don't seem to like us when it comes to dropping those things near us. We've got all kinds of goodies that are way out in the middle of nowhere, and if you watch, the boom rats will come around and they'll eat the berries and stuff. It's pretty funny. It's one of those little systems that they just kind of run around eating the food if it's available. Alright, so let me count up what I have here. We've got 7, 13, 16 turrets, a mysterious blight just on cue, but it's okay. We've got 172 food, so everything's going to be fine. Nothing to worry about there. You can afford to lose. What's going to be the big loss right there is the loss in efficiency because everybody's going to go back and start farming now. Big Hook's down here doing his duty to get the last room put in, which is nice of him. And that's why we love Big Cook the best. It's not because he's named after large cooking utensils or a large profession. It's because he gets the stuff done that needs to get done. And then down in here, I would also recommend that we start mining all of that out to just grab whatever metal's available. I think each of these piles is 35. Yeah. So if we can get ourselves a good 800, 900 metal, I think we'll be all right. Once all of the guns and everything else have been hauled. It's strange to me that Montoya, the people that I've assigned to hauling, yeah, the people that I've assigned to hauling aren't getting the corpses. So unfortunately, I really, I need the corpses out of here. The other thing that we might consider doing, oh good, we've got another one. Oh no, I want to jump to location. Now I just have to hope that I see it. Oh, they've fallen right next to each other. Okay. If we get really desperate in the future, we may be able to send people out to go grab that stuff. But for now, we're not that desperate. It should be okay. What I should do is fill this entire area with fear cages to kind of scare people coming into my base and drive them crazy. Might work a little bit. But I don't know if that's something that I want to handle right now. I'll think about it. I don't like falling back on evil stuff. I'm a good guy. I like to play the good guy. Why are these saying that they still have no power? No one has laid down. I thought I scheduled that to be done. Apparently, it appears as though I have not. Kind of put in a few more redundant wires right here just to make sure. We shouldn't have to worry too much about anybody going crazy on us. There we go. I guess I will prioritize a few more people. He's a janitor, so that means he probably loves cleaning and stuff. So let's have him clean and haul. And then he'll help with everything else too, and it'll work out okay. My cousin, when he was a little kid, he used to drive his mom crazy because he used to say he wanted to be a janitor when he grew up. And like, janitor, that's a good job. I mean, it pays. It's definitely, I think it's a state salary too because you're an employee of the Department of Education, I think. But I don't know. For, his, for whatever reason, his parents, he used to be like, I'm going to be a janitor when he was like two or three years old. He used to play with a mop all the time. Like, hey, follow your dreams, bud. Now he works for Homeland Security, so. You know, I wanted to be a baseball player when I was growing up. I don't think any little kid ever truly ends up being what they were going to be. It's always astronaut, baseball player, something like that. Probably football player if you're from Europe, I would suppose, is what you would swap it out for. By the way, while we're on the subject, while we're on the subject, I've had a number of people be like, why is the World Series called the World Series? Because the world does not participate in it. And so while we're talking about baseball for a moment, I did want to give you a little bit of trivia so as to kind of stop you from asking that question. Or to save you from asking that question, because most people don't know, seem to know the answer. But anyways, it's called the World Series because back in New York, there used to be a newspaper called the Daily World, or the Weekly World, or something like that. And they used to finance the World Series, so hence it's the World Series, because they used to finance it. And so there it is. Now, everyone knows why the World Series is called the World Series. I had asked the question before, too, but then I had had the luck of hearing somebody actually explain it. I think it was Christopher Hitchens, in fact, who explained what the World Series was to me. Not to me specifically, but in one of his little rants. I don't see any more metal right there, so we are going to go ahead and cancel that order. 
I haven't been paying attention. Did anybody show up who wants to sell us stuff? No. Perfectly fine. I need to put in some creature comforts as well. So let's put in another room over here. And it'll be just a little dining room where they can sit down and eat because they've all been eating standing for the last little bit. And I think it does make them happier if they're able to recline and eat their dinner. I think instead what I should probably do here, and there's so much stuff going on. I think what I should probably do is in between episodes, I will probably manually assign everything because as it stands right now, this is cool. But in fact, I think I would have him do cleaning second with the janitor. Let's make sure he does hauling first. Because, yeah, I don't see a whole lot of hauling getting done even with three people only dedicated to doing that. It might be just because they're moving around like the random little bits of meal and whatnot. Let's give him some blue carpet and a lamp so that he doesn't feel left out by comparison to all of his comrades. There we are. And our power usage is still on the increase during the day, although I don't think it would kill us to put in maybe six more of our, I think six more solar panels would probably help us take the edge off of that. We're definitely outside the range where the thermal generators are helping us anymore, so might be a worthwhile thing to accustom ourselves to. Montoya is one of my haulers. There might just be too much cleaning work to do. Are these falling? That might be. Is this falling inside of our home zone? So I do want all of this to be home zoned, and I do want this to be home zoned. And it looks like everybody is on a hauling spree right now, bringing back metal, which is a good thing because that's going to let me know what my metal supply is looking like for the... I said looking bike. That's weird. I don't know where that came from. I made a B sound instead of an L sound. I'm a little bit ashamed of myself right now. I don't even know how to manipulate my own mouth anymore. Things are falling apart. The rails are falling off. NCE, they are falling off. But, as I was saying, it's going to help me appraise my metal situation for the future and make sure that we've got a nice supply so that we don't need to worry about running out anytime soon. As soon as we recruit Fox, that's going to be one more person. What is he good at? He's incapable of doing manual labor or anything scary. So he's going to be a character that is not going to have a whole lot of uses outside of combat, as I recall. Being manually dumb means that you can't do just about anything. We've got a little bit of break here, but I'm not quite so confident that we're not going to get hit by raiders before I can get anything else done. Big Cook, go grab the Molotovs, and let's go burn up some more corpses down here. But don't set yourself on fire. You've got a backpack full of explosives. Alright. There we are. We'll go get his gun back. And I don't know how many bodies that's going to destroy. But it should get rid of... Of course, it starts... <laughs> Damn you, nature. Why? <laughs> if it weren't for bad luck, I'd have no luck at all. Man, I just can't get rid of these bodies. It's alright. We'll worry about it later. It's not a huge concern. It's just one of those minor things where it's just like, even nature is now conspiring against us. Into each life some rain must fall, but too much is falling into my corpse graveyard. Squirrels down here dining on the flesh of the dead. Because that's what squirrels do every now and again. You never see them do it because there's not so much flesh of the dead laying around in the streets anymore. But back in ye olden times, they were always up on the flesh. Murderous little squirrels running through the darkness, grabbing the throats and the eyes of those who wandered across their path. Is that a little bit dark? I think that's a little bit dark for Rodentia. Let's put in a door right here, maybe. I mean, we don't need a door, whatever. And then we'll call this a green carpet area. This is going to be a green carpet area, too. But then we'll also put in a... Yeah, that worked out all right. We'll put in a set of long tables right here where people can just get down and eat. How much of those cost me, by the way? 35 All right, so that expenditure isn't too terrible. And then we'll get some chairs in here. I don't foresee that we'll have more than like eight people eating at any given time. 
They don't seem to take their meals. This girl's just out eating in the darkness. Then again, Freedy was one of those mass killers that just tried to come murder us. So maybe eating in the darkness like Silence of the Lambs or something is what gets me just sitting back there. It's like, hello, Clarice. Key empty. God. What a movie. What a film. What a film. What a film. What a film. Still remains one of my favorites, even after all these years. I don't know why I like it so much. It's a little bit dark that I like it so much, but it's a great film. I don't think there's anything dark about enjoying good cinematography. I don't get to watch horror movies that much anymore. I have a member of my household who is now terrified of horror movies, and so I'm a big horror movie buff. I watch lots of them, but not a lot of downtime in which I can watch horror movies by myself anymore. I used to watch them all day. I loved horror movies. I was a huge horror movie fan. Anymore, I'm still a fan. I just don't get to watch them as much as I would like to. It's okay. The things we give up. Hey, alright, so we've successfully recruited Fox, who needs a gun. Let me take a look at his character sheet and figure out... Actually, we'll look at his overview. Okay, so that's as I thought. We'll put him on... That's not what I want. We'll put him on, I guess... He can't cut plants, okay. Well... I'll put him on growing duty then. We'll just have him be a builder, I suppose. Like anything that needs to get done. I am hoping at some point some of this debris, this flotsam jetsam detritus will be removed. I could tell him to do it manually, but it's fine. It's not a huge deal right now. It's not bothering me or anything. We have an industrial trader here, but we have no cash. That, however, doesn't stop us from buying what they have, so... At $2 a pop, we can get out of here with maybe... Oh, okay. I'm going to have to do that by hand. Well, then, let's go back over... Wrong way. I'm not looking at the right number here. Call that uh, 384. There we go. And so we got a little bit of metal. 192. It's something. And then we've got to wait for a combat trader to come back through. And once a combat trader has come back through, we're not hurting too much for metal right now. We've got enough metal to where we can recover from an attack if they end up destroying a bunch of turrets or anything. These two are a little too close. I should have scooted that back by one. And then maybe center staged one right there. And that would be kind of the perfect layout for what we have right now. It's okay. I'll bear that in mind for later, and once we get to it, we'll get to it. But anyways, I had to make a little cut right there because the game crashed on me. It's okay, and nothing got lost. The visual data or anything didn't get corrupted, so we're all good. I'm going to break the episode off right here, because I feel as though we've made mm, decent strides. I mean, if we're not making strides, we're at least making baby steps. I'll see you guys in the next episode. The game is called RimWorld. You can get it down below in the information. I will see you guys next time, and hi-do, everybody!